Leeds United are set for a big match against Coventry this weekend and it could be another huge day for the promotion push, not only for Leeds United pushing for an automatic place, but Coventry who are desperate for a place in the playoffs. Whichever team doesn't get a result here will be bitterly disappointed and mad and it could set them back and will Coventry be the stumbling block and will Leeds United have the necessary players to push through Coventry? All good questions, but first, subscribe. I'm trying to push towards 3,000 subscribers at the moment, and everyone that has so far, I massively appreciate it. We're getting closer and closer. Cheers. Anyway, we need to talk about the Legion United team news first of all, and there are not going to be too many changes. According to Daniel Farker, in his press conference, he basically said that there weren't many updates outside of Ilya Gurev still being the big question. Apparently, he had a small chance of being fit, a small chance of being selected, but the issue with that is, from an outside point of view, it's nigh on impossible to know what that actually means, whether that means that he will be available, whether that means that he will remain a question. It's tricky, and that made picking this predicted lineup a little bit equally tricky, and we'll get into some of the discussions around who people think should start where in this section as well. Ilan Melia starts in net, that is without a question, in my opinion, with the defence of Sam Byram, Joe Rodon, Ethan Ampadu, Junior Furpo. This I've gone with because Byram has been pretty good since he came back into the side. It feels a bit weird to drop him and change a winning team and all that sort of stuff. Rodon and Ampadu, you've got no reason to replace either of those. And Junior Fopo, I will always back, but he played really, really well in the last match anyway. Then we push into the midfield. And I don't think Ilya Grove will be fit and ready for this game. Archie Gray, Glenn Kamara, probably the ways to go with this one, purely because... They can definitely do the job very effectively. They know what they're doing, and ideally, after another week or so of training, one of them will be at least a little bit better in that defensive midfield role. If they're not, potential issues, but I think we'll be okay. In front of them, we've got the line of three of Crescencio Somerville, Jorginho Ruter, Dan James. This just works. Crescencio Somerville, we have seen, is able to score a goal out of nowhere. Ruter is a creative monster, and Dan James just scored a goal from 47 yards out. It's quite hard to drop that, isn't it? He's just good. And then at number nine, I'm going to make the decision that a lot of people won't agree with, but sod it. I'm going to stick with it. I think Patrick Bamford starts at the top of the pitch. Matteo Joseph has admittedly been quite good off the bench. He has been fairly consistent in his performances. He's been scoring goals, but at the same time, you've got more questions there. Is he that good because he is just next level when it comes to playing against a tired defence? Is he that good because he just is that good of a footballer? Or is it a case of Bamford has tired the players in front of him out and that has helped and it just sort of fits together perfectly? I think it would be too much of a risk to have him start a fixture at this point. Sure, if we're already promoted, that's when you get to experiment and mess with things and play about with a lineup, but you don't do it when you're six games from the end of a season and you're still not really dropping points. But outside of Leeds United, we need to know a little bit more about how Coventry play, and it's quite interesting because they match us in the formation. They use a 4-2-3-1 shape, and it's clearly very good and it's very effective, and their team is quite good because they're currently seventh place in the championship, trying to push and fight for that last playoff spot currently filled by Norwich City. Had to double check then, make sure I get it right. They're currently four points off Norwich City, but if they drop points here, that could expand and expand. Depends on what Norwich do tomorrow. I think they could genuinely beat Ipswich, which would be great for us. But Coventry aren't there for no reason. Coventry are incredibly creative. They had 56 XG, and not only are they good at creating the chances, as we've seen with that number, but they tend to outperform it as well with their finishing. They've scored 63 times in the league this season which is really good. It's a sum that not that many teams can match. Let's have a look. They are currently sixth place in the league for goal scored, better than West Brom, who are in fifth. And that could make things a little bit more competitive. They cause a lot of these chances through their through balls in the same way that we do with Jorginho Ruter playing balls through the middle of the defensive line. And they tend to progress with passing rather than dribbling. They're really low on the progression table when it comes to dribbles, but their passing is higher than you'd expect. So Coventry are very clearly a good team, but they have to have some weakness as something that we can target, and they do have those issues. First up, they tend to make plenty of little small errors, and this comes as a matter of they will foul in stupid positions, 
But also they'll give away goals. They will give away little own goals. For example, Liam Kitching in their most recent game conceded two own goals against Cardiff and dropped all of the points, giving the three points to Cardiff City and really harming Coventry's push. In addition to that, their goalkeeper can be fairly easy targeted as well. There's a thing called post-shot XG, which measures after a shot how likely it is to be a goal, and that's how you measure if a goalkeeper's good or not. He's conceded, I think, two goals or so, more than he should have this season so far, which is bad for a goalkeeper. It's not the worst numbers you'll see, but it's a situation in which you basically say, okay, so we test him wherever we can. And that's something that I think Legion United need to do, and there are a few big steps that we need to look at here. So first up, we need to isolate the defenders wherever we can. We know that they are vulnerable to those individual errors, the little mistakes, and if we're able to isolate defenders, that means that they're rushing into a decision. If you have Somerville on a one-on-one -on -one with their right-back, of course their right-back's going to go, shit, this guy's quite good, this could be a problem for me. And you see, I would have pronounced his name, but it's that Lati Baudier kind of guy, Le I don't know. It's very French. Uh, but he, if he's isolated one-on-one -on -one against Crescencio Somerville, he's not going to be the happiest. And the way that we do that is we lean hard into that highly transitional style. This is a team that are going to come at us. And when that happens, they're going to lose some of that defensive structure. And on the counter-attack is when we will hit hard, when we'll have those one-on-ones, and we'll ultimately create plenty of opportunities. Outside of that, we need to make sure that we're using subs effectively. For example, we've seen that subs can be some of the best things that happen in a game when Matteo Joseph has been scoring. If you're looking at him and making sure that he can come off the bench against a weak and slow defence, that's what you need, basically. He's more likely to score goals, more likely to make a difference, and we can similarly see that with Kruev. If he's not fit for 90 minutes, if he's not fit to start, at least we can maybe see him on the bench. And if he comes on, he will restructure that midfield for the better. And I think we'll feel a lot better for it. So ultimately, what are my predictions for the match? I think it'll be a fairly tight game, but narrowly lean in our favour. I think if it gets transitional, that's where the quality starts to shine through. And as I am 100% sure Coventry fans and Huddersfield fans would tell you, we've got a very expensive football team. But in the championship, that means you've got the quality. And that's why I think it'll lean our way. It could turn gritty because both sides desperately need the result. But I think ultimately I'm going to go Leeds United to win. 2-1. I think we've got too much quality for them. We might concede a goal because I still don't think we'll have Gruev back. But ultimately, I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't yet. It's massively appreciated. You could even become a channel member. That would be fan fantastic of you. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you later. Also, let me know what you're thinking about CatCam because I think she's looking very cute up there. But if she's a distraction, just let me know. See you later.